This video was supposed to be a quick one looking at some tips so I could go back to making videos as soon as my exams were over. But in the end, even after 9 episodes of the sim racing guide, there are still a lot of tips I wanted to share with you guys. These tips didn't quite fit within a certain theme of any of the other videos of the guide, but I did manage to somewhat rank them from the easiest to apply to the more advanced stuff. Let's not waste any more time because we got some ground to cover. Vision is extremely important in racing. And in sim racing, it's our screens that allow us to see the world around us. Getting the right field of view and seating position is therefore key to get a good performance out on the virtual track. Just like when you zoom with a lens on a camera, your FOV settings will warp the objects on track when you change these settings. That's because the sim will try to fit the world around you into a frame that doesn't change in size. This can not only affect the immersion factor of the sim, but it will also affect your performance as a field of view that is too large will skew with your perception. Too narrow of a field of view will of course cause you to lose some spatial awareness. That's why it's important to find the right settings for you. A tool that can help you with that is the FOV calculator. Pick your sim, put in the numbers, and the calculator gives you the exact value you should be running for an optimal experience. The camera mode you use will also have an effect in that manner, but here it's more about reaction speed. I personally found out after many races in a modern Formula 1 car on Assetto Corsa that when racing in the T-Cam, I lost some of my ability to react to what the car was doing. I did have a better view of what was happening around me, but in hindsight this was not worth it because it hindered me to be able to react to oversteer in time. This is pretty logical when you think about it. Being closer to your car will give you a faster feedback to its movement. Therefore, if you want to have the best reaction behind the wheel, ditch that third person view and stick with a good FOV in cockpit cam. Finally, while we are still on the topic of vision, removing motion blur might make it a tad easier for you to spot breaking points and other markers on track. For people who play first person shooters, turning off motion blur seems like an evidence. And while in sim racing it will have less of an impact on your performance, I personally turn it off when I want to race competitively, while I sometimes put it back on for joyrides. The position in your virtual car is important, but having a reliable environment to race in, in the real world, is just as important. All too often I see people racing either too close or too far to their wheel. For a good racing position, you should try to position yourself just like in a real-life car. Your seat should be low, but not so low as to impair your view. Ideally, you want your chin to be at least higher than the top of the wheel. Your back should be as straight as you find comfortable. And then to see how far off your racing wheel you should be, put both of your hands over your wheel while having your back against your seat. Your two wrists should effortlessly rest on top of the wheel. This will give you enough slack in your arms to turn the wheel comfortably without requiring much force at all when turning. Find a position that is most comfortable for you and stick with it for a reliable environment to improve yourself in. The next tip is to look for apps within the sim of your choice to help you out. Most sims nowadays have add-ons that can make your life a lot easier. One example of this is Helicorsa, which helps to see how cars around you behave. Certainly a handy tool if you're running a shallow field of view on a smaller monitor. Camber Extravaganza is another example of an app available for Assetto Corsa that will give you the tools to set up the camber in your car properly. Virtual customizable spotters can also be handy and can even be set up to say your name and give encouragements while racing. In iRacing, someone even made a tool to calculate your fuel levels for pit stops. Depending on the sim you drive on, more or less additions will exist, so check out the forums and see which ones are the must-haves. Our next tip is to stick to one car if you want to improve quickly, and preferably also to one sim of course. It can be tempting to jump into anything that has wheels when you first start out sim racing, but if you want to improve your craft, having a stable environment is super important. It really has a compounding effect to stick to one car and learn different techniques in it. 
That way you know whether something is happening because of the car you're driving in or whether it's your technique that is causing trouble. If you guys want me to make an extensive list of great cars to learn in, make sure to comment that in the comment sections down below and leave a like on this video. Three great cars I can already recommend are the MX-5 Cup, F4 Formula cars and I guess also GT4 cars. They are great at more power hungry tracks. These cars are, as you can imagine, a bit on the slow side, but this is actually an extra bonus tip for you guys. Slower cars are far greater for learning than faster ones. It's okay to be tempted to jump into a GT3 or an F1 car now and then, but try not to run before you learn to walk. This tip comes from a longtime viewer of the channel. I discussed hot lapping in the sim racing guide and Commander Geocam rightly suggested putting the ghost car on and giving it a one second advantage. That way you can see your own mistakes and improve upon them immediately. I personally prefer to look at the relatives, but they are a lot less visual than this technique and requires you to have a bit of knowledge to apply the theory to the numbers. So that's what suits you best and see how your lap time dwindles. Once you got the basics down, a great way to improve is by joining a racing league. I personally think I waited way too long to join one, sticking too often to racing AI cars. A competitive environment forces you to bring the best out of yourself, and you can even interact with other people of the community to ask for tips. Joining an endurance team might be even more beneficial, as teammates will want you to improve to get on their level. Racing leagues are also great for you to learn to deal with pressure and will force you to adapt to unusual situations. Overall, it will hone your instincts and force you to improve quickly. To find leagues, I'd suggest checking out your favorite YouTubers' Discord servers and asking around whether they have any racing leagues or fun races. Next, let's talk about the racing itself for a bit. What I see most beginners being frustrated about is when they get crashed into. And rightly so, but sometimes I wonder if they really did everything they could to avoid getting into a crash in the first place. Make sure you always leave more room than you think is necessary when you don't know your rival. And here is the actual tip, when you expect a race start to get a bit messy, try to somehow position yourself on the inside of the corner, even if you sacrifice some easy positions by doing so. Most crashes result in cars washing out of the corner and taking out people. If you are already on the inside, most of the time you should either get a clear path when the cars crash out, or you'll have a clear view of what's happening, giving you enough information to react accordingly. When you do get into a crash or when you make a mistake yourself, it's extremely easy to lose focus. This is exactly what Virtual Paddock commented about underneath the video I made about car control. When you make a mistake, take a lap or two to process what happened and try and keep your emotions in check. Driving more aggressively and trying to compensate will mostly just end up in you making more mistakes anyway, so keep your focus and reach that finish line. Make sure you save your replays after a race. You can learn so much by re-watching your own race and look at where you missed out. Certainly when you get a good fight, it's important to look at what you did well to fend off your opponent and where you might have made some mistakes. Let's talk about optimization now. Every car has its quirks. Make sure you learn them. One example of a quirk I can think about are shifting points. In most modern race cars, you have lights indicating when to shift up, but those lights do not guarantee an optimum shift for maximum performance. In fact, a lot of cars indicate a shifting point that is a little bit earlier than what is optimal. In the MX-5 Cup, for example, in iRacing, the optimal shifting point is about 7200 RPM. That leaves you a lot of time to shift up from the moment where the shifting indicators start lighting up. Also important to note is that not all cars have their optimum shifting point close to redline. In fact, most engines lose some performance when getting too close to redline. It's abusing little tricks like this that will yield you a couple of tenths every lap, but will quickly add up to seconds of performance over the course of a race. The sim racing game you race in will also have these kinds of quirks. 
I'll probably have to make a whole other series talking about different sims themselves if I want to highlight these quirks, but most oftentimes these have something to do with specific car setup exploits that will affect how the sim interprets your car's performance. Make sure to go check out specific forums within the sim of your choice and ask around what you can do to abuse the system. I know I said this video would have 10 tips and I probably gave many more than that already, but here is just one more bonus tip for people just starting out. Don't get discouraged if you're not the new Max Verstappen after a couple of laps. Sim racing, although it looks easy just having fun driving cars around on track, is still a skill like any other, and it will take time for you to get better at. I've been doing it for almost 9 years now, and there are still many things I'm not great at. There will always be someone that is better than you, but every day you practice, you'll be better than someone that doesn't. Don't give up, take it easy, and remember to have fun. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like behind, and I'll see you space racers in the next one. Goodbye.